Have you ever wondered what exactly happens to light bulbs after a boat capsizes out in the open ocean? We're about to find out without going down with the ship. Welcome. For today's menu, we'll be serving up this lovely assortment of compact fluorescent and incandescent bulbs that you would typically find on a cruising yacht. Heck, I'll even wear my sailing hat for the occasion. Now you might be asking, hey Jeff, isn't mercury toxic? Aren't you worried about contamination? Yes, I am. But I'll flush the chamber out after and air it out and probably grab a detox drink. Each of these CFL bulbs contain 4 milligrams of mercury. The old thermometers doctors used to use contain 500 milligrams. That's equivalent to putting 125 of these bulbs in your mouth. But why do these contain mercury in the first place? When you turn on your CFL, it powers a ballast which helps kickstart the bulb and then regulates the current once the electricity begins flowing through the glass tube containing argon gas and a bit of mercury vapor. Mercury, which is a relatively small atom, requires less energy to raise the electron to a higher state. And as it falls back down, it releases a UV photon. This is what makes the bulb so efficient. This generation of invisible ultraviolet light by the mercury vapor is absorbed by the white fluorescent phosphor coating on the inside of the tube. It's the excitation on the coating and some from the mercury vapor which emits the visible light we see. This was actually a huge technological breakthrough in the lighting industry when they first came out in the 90s. If you think about it, incandescent bulbs haven't changed much since Thomas Edison first introduced them back in 1879. These bulbs still generate light by heating a tungsten filament until it reaches 2300 degrees Celsius and glows white hot. This is why they're so inefficient, because only 10% of the electricity that goes into the bulb actually turns into light. The rest is dissipated as heat. CFLs use 75% less energy and last 10 times longer than incandescent bulbs. It's a shame that these are getting phased out by 2028. If you're watching this video before then, stock up now. All right, I already loaded a bulb into the chamber. What you guys are about to see has been happening on deep water maritime wrecks for well over 100 years, but it's never been captured before on film with sound until now. This should be enlightening. Okay, that was freaky. I hope I didn't induce any panic attacks for anyone watching. The bulb imploded at 146 meters in the sunlight zone, which is no surprise considering the glass is only 0.7 millimeters thick. Let's replay it again in slow motion. Now let's see how this compares with the compact fluorescent when it goes down with the ship.
This bulb went much deeper than I expected, given the geometry of the glass. It imploded at 966 meters, just shy of the midnight zone. Let's dig into the footage to see what happened. When we zoom in and speed up the video in forward and reverse, we can actually see the glass coil flexing ever so slightly, like a compressing spring. I thought this was absolutely fascinating to watch, given the high stiffness of glass. At 555 meters, a first crack was heard, but the gas pressure inside remained constant until another crack happened at the far end of the coil at 839 meters and water began leaking in. This is an area of high stress concentration due to the bending moment, which on top of the stress caused by the external pressure, led to the failure. After that point, an implosion occurs at 966 meters and the pressure shockwave ruptures the entire coil pulverizing the glass in an instant, transforming it back to a silica sand and leaving a white cloud of phosphor in its wake. You definitely don't want to be hearing any sounds of imploding bulbs emanating throughout the boat while you're stuck in your cabin during a cruise. But by that time, any remaining air pockets within the ship would have been already compressed. Folks, I know this goes without saying, but if you're inside your cabin and the boat is listing, don't stay inside. Go to the deck, grab a life jacket, and get yourself onto a raft. Even if it means disobeying your captain. Well, it's been a year since I launched a channel, and on this 25th episode, we reached another milestone. We hit 10,000 subscribers, and that puts us in the top. 2% of channels out there, which is mind-boggling. I hope you guys can reach across the internet because I got you a little cake. Thanks for watching. Here you go. Just a tip. Hmm. This is actually good. Oh, by the way, enjoy some celebratory implosions with your slice. Two words you thought would never go well together. Thanks for tuning in and keeping the Oni Implosion channel on YouTube afloat. As always, drop in any requests for items you want to see crushed down below. If you need a drink, or you're just wondering what happened to all that expensive champagne left behind on the sinking super yacht, 
click here. Feel free to stick around for the after party. Cheers. <laughs>